Well, joining us now is Labour's Shadow Defence Secretary, uh, Nia Griffiths. Thank you very much for being with us uh, yeah. today. <clears throat> We've just been watching that film from Grimsby, mm. um, an area that clearly voted heavily to leave the EU. Are you worried when you listen to people saying, you know, they've voted Labour before, their parents have voted Labour, but now because of Brexit, because of your position on the second referendum, they may vote for the Conservatives? I think the point is that people up and down the country are sick and tired of talking about Brexit and the failure of this Tory government after three years to get any sort of deal which would be in any way acceptable to people. And the point is that Labour's policy is very clear that we will be giving people that opportunity to vote on a final deal. We will be renegotiating that final deal and we will be giving them the opportunity to choose between that and remain. And I think the people in Grimsby are also well aware of the huge transformational process programme that Labour is offering, firstly, to rebalance the economy, to invest in areas like Grimsby. And, of course, our green industrial revolution is going to bring a lot of jobs to Grimsby. So they know that they've got a very good MP in Manly On, who's also pointed out that there are many other issues that people in Grimsby are worried about. They've seen the austerity from the Tories, they've seen their services cut to the bone, and they know that with a Labour government, they could get the investment they need in jobs, plus the investment they need in their services. I don't doubt there are people in Grimsby to whom that message on austerity, on, on investment, really appeals. But I have to be honest, speaking to those people in the market, I'm not sure that the message on Brexit, even if it's clear, is what they want to hear, is it? Well, the point is, Parliament has completely failed under this Tory government to I'm resolve the, about Labour, well, the Labour issue of Brexit. So that is why we are saying that it is absolutely right that the people should decide. And so the people of Grimsby will have that opportunity under a Labour government. OK. Um, I just want to have a look at some polling um, that we have got exclusively for the show today. It's, it's from YouGov and also the Centre for Towns have been doing some really interesting stuff um, on well, how people vote in towns. And this is ex-industrial towns, so the kind of Labour heartlands, mm -hmm. if you like. At the 2017 general election, according to this research, 50% said that they vote Labour, 37% Conservative in this area. And the current voting intention, though, that's now changed. Just 27% say they'd vote Labour and 32% Conservative. So I'll just show you another uh, graph as well. I again, this is from the same research from the Centre for Towns and YouGov. This shows that the Conservatives are leading in every single area apart from core cool cities. Villages, communities, small towns, medium towns, large towns. And I should say that the core city uh, lead for Labour has also dropped significantly as well, uh, from 23 points in 2017 to just five points currently. I mean, are you worried when you look at these figures? This would point towards a Conservative victory, wouldn't it? Well, I think what you have to remember is what, what happened in 2017 was that from a very low base, uh, Labour made enormous progress during that election. So this is a snapshot now. But when our manifesto is published next week, when people have a real chance to uh, look at the transformative change we're proposing, the real change that we're proposing in their lives, then I think we will see a change in these polls. But do you not worry, though, that there's a problem here with your message not getting through, particularly in some of the areas where you've really relied on people for support for many times? Grimsby, for example, returning a Labour MP in every election since since 1945, and yet many people there clearly concerned about the direction of the party and in particular Brexit. Well, uh, we will never, ever be complacent about any part of the country. But the fact of the matter is that people are absolutely fed up of austerity. They are fed up of the polarisation of investment only to certain parts of the country. And we are going to make absolutely certain that every part of the country benefits from the investment we're going to make, particularly taking on the issue of the green industrial revolution, jobs that will help to respond to the climate change crisis, and to make sure that people have proper services. So there's a lot for people to look at in the next couple of weeks. And I think we will see these polls change. Um, before uh, your interview, mm -hmm. we spent a long time talking to Kwasi Kwarteng, the uh, Energy Minister of <coughs> Government, and mm -hmm. he was talking about this dossier that the Conservatives have produced, which claims <coughs> that a Labour government would cost the country an additional £1.2 trillion over five years. What's your reaction to this? Well, quite clearly, the Conservatives have put this out because they want this headline to try and rubbish Labour. But as you uh, quite rightly pointed out, you've just been speaking to Kwasi Kwarteng and he just couldn't explain the figures. These figures are absolutely ludicrous. They've come from absolutely nowhere. They've been cobbled together by the Tories. And the important point here is that when we publish our manifesto next week, we shall also be publishing all the costings that go with that. And the reason the Tories are trying to rubbish this is because they know we're going to have a much more exciting manifesto than what 
they've produced. And don't forget, in 2017, we also costed every promise that we made, whereas the Tories didn't cost a single thing. Although um, Boris Johnson told me personally that they would be a fully costed uh, manifesto from the Conservative Party. Uh, in their defence, they say that all these figures are Labour policy announcements or things that have been passed uh, at your conference and things that your Shadow Cabinet have committed to. Well, so I, I can... I we can... should take these at face value, shouldn't we? Well, I think, the, I think uh, um, as, I've, as I've just said, they can't really explain the figures. Some of them are, are rolled together figures. We're not going to be implementing every single thing that was in our, our, our conference in, in this manifesto. Isn't that how Labour Party democracy is supposed to work, though? Well, you can only do a certain amount at once, can't you? So when, you, when we have the manifesto published, we will, I can assure you, have the full costings for what we're going to be able to do in the next five years. And uh, every single announcement that we have made, John McDonnell has been absolutely strict with us on the discipline of being able to explain exactly where the money's going to come from for each one. OK. Now, it's Remembrance Sunday, mm -hmm. so Remembrance mm -hmm. Sunday uh, today, um, a day where many of us will be <coughs> reflecting on the sacrifices made by generations that come before us. Um, you are announcing more help for veterans. Um, what is it that you want to do? Well, absolutely. I mean, today is Remembrance Sunday. It's absolutely right and proper that we remember the contribution that veterans made both in their military life, but also in their civilian lives afterwards. And what we are saying is that, as you very well know, most veterans transition very, very well into um, civilian life. But we want to enhance their opportunities. So Labour is saying the real change that we will bring is a right to lifelong learning and training so that the skills that uh, ex-military personnel have learnt in the forces can be uh, brought into civilian life, can have qualifications that are properly recognised and that employers can recognise those skills. Um, of course, we're also very, very concerned the complete failure of the Tory government to deal with mental health issues. And we are going to make the investment so that every single veteran, wherever they live in the country, can get proper access promptly to both the physical and mental health services that they need. And I'm sure that uh, many of your viewers would have been quite horrified to see people lying, sleeping, rough sleeping in the streets of our big cities, uh, particularly as it's getting colder towards the winter. And we are very clear that we will be making sure that those veterans are housed promptly and given the support that they need. Um, it feels as if um, we have become somewhat worried about the idea of military intervention uh, in recent years, perhaps the legacy of Iraq. Uh, I'm thinking also about um, the Syrian conflict. Can you see any scenarios where a Labour government would commit to overseas military intervention? Well, look, there's certainly we've all learnt from the Chilcot report very important lessons about you know, what intervention is about and how you need to think carefully what is the aftermath and what will be the consequences. So, of course, we're going to be thinking very carefully about any military intervention. But you know, we are a part of um, a NATO alliance. We also uh, take very seriously our role in the UN. And we think it's very important that the UK should have a very strong voice on the world stage and I think you only need to look at the uh, terrible, terrible um, slaughter that there was in, in, in the Balkans before we intervened there. And, and Syria where we didn't intervene. And the, and the issue of, of Rwanda again where people felt that we had let things go on for far too long there. So there are going to be cases where we are not going to be able to walk by on the other side because we take very seriously uh, the, the well-being and the human rights of people across the world. And also, of course, um, we have to deal with the threats that there are to our country here. Mm -hmm. And so very often what we do abroad is actually very directly affecting our security here. I'm interested okay. in Trident as well. Um, in Blackwood was talking earlier mm. about the SNP opposition to the renewal of Trident. Um, we know that um, John McDonnell and Jeremy Corbyn have both said they wouldn't use it. John McDonnell in 2018, Jeremy Corbyn in 2015, admittedly some years ago. Um, would a Labour government be prepared to use the nuclear weapons, the nuclear deterrent? Well, we are absolutely committed to keeping our nuclear deterrent. It's we not think... quite what I asked, though. No, yeah, the difference I, between well, keeping it yeah, and I'm, using I'm, it. I'm coming there. Um, we are absolutely committed to um, keeping the nuclear deterrent. We feel it's a very, very important part of our defence, particularly now as we see a resurgent Russia and we see the, you know, the US perhaps being a little bit lukewarm about NATO. It's very important the UK takes a leading role there. And Jeremy fully understands uh, what deterrence means. Now, 
No Prime Minister ever reveals exactly what they write when they write the, the letter. Um, and so it wouldn't be appropriate for me to, to make any comment. But I can assure you that the defence of this country is absolutely foremost in Jeremy's mind. It is a fair question to ask whether or not a Labour government would be prepared to use a deterrent that we spend so much money on renewing. Well, I think the, the whole point about deterrence is that you don't give away... Well, um, the whole the, point is that you have to be prepared to use it, isn't it? The, the whole point is that you don't give away the exact circumstances or what you would actually do. It's that element of, of doubt about deterrence which is very, very important as part of that deterrence. And as I, as I have said, no Prime Minister has ever revealed exactly what they have written down um, and the situation, of course, would be exactly the same for us. I'm not asking... Uh to reveal exactly what a Jeremy Corbyn Prime Minister would write down in the instructions uh, that, as you say, are, are, are private, are locked away, are, are burned after that Prime Minister steps down. What I'm asking is, in principle, if a Labour government would be prepared to use a nuclear deterrent. Well, the, the point is, the whole issue about having a deterrent is that there is that element of doubt in your opponent's minds, and so therefore it serves its purpose as a deterrent. If I asked the Defence Secretary, he would give me a clear answer on this. But the point, as I say, the point is that we have the deterrent because we absolutely believe that we should have that deterrent and that's our Labour Party policy. And as I've said, that is part of the theory of deterrence. OK. Um, now, I just want to talk to you quickly uh, about anti-Semitism. We were talking to Kwasi Kwarteng about Islamophobia in the Conservative Party. Um, now, so far, we've seen around six Labour candidates who are either quit uh, or been forced to stand down uh, because of uh, allegations around anti-Semitism, whether it's comments that they've made in the past. Just to give a couple of examples, Gideon Bull, candidate in Clacton, for calling a Jewish counsellor Shylock. Kate Ramsden, a candidate in Aberdeenshire, comparing Israel to an abusive adult. I mean, it's just the first week of the campaign. What's going on? Why can't you shake these mm. kind of allegations? Well, we absolutely must have the highest standards in public life. and. We must absolutely stamp out all forms of anti-Semitism and other forms of racial prejudice and LGBT prejudice. Um, and so where we do, uh, unfortunately, discover such things, it's absolutely right and proper that we have a proper investigation and that appropriate action is taken. Um, and that's why we are taking the action that we are taking. I mean, the problem is, it feels like these stories are starting to cut through. I mean, we were hearing from Grimsby... Uh, some of the people in Grimsby earlier, um, and I just still remember one girl who was, I was talking to, Jeremy Corbyn fan, Labour supporter, she likes what you're doing on austerity, mm. she doesn't like Boris Johnson, she really wants to vote for you, and yet she still said this to me uh, when I spoke to her in uh, Grimsby, her uh, covered market, about Jeremy Corbyn. He's been accused of saying things that are racist and, you know, anti-Semitic and, Semitic and stuff, but I think some of the things he's doing are really good. He's trying to support young people more. I mean, this is someone who is on your side, and mm. yet the messages about anti-Semitism are still filtering through. Mm. This must be deeply frustrating. Well, as you know, Jeremy absolutely is not anti-Semitic and he is not racist, and he would immediately condemn those sorts of comments that you know, you've quoted earlier. Um, but the point is, we do need to make sure that we, we stamp this out in the party. We do need to make sure that candidates are properly investigated. So why hasn't um, it happened, then? Well, the, the point is that we are, we are making sure that we do investigate. Where things come to light, we are making sure that we do investigate and that we do take action.